Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how you can enhance freckles, skin tones, and facial features in Photoshop 2020. And then guys, I'm going to show you how you can turn it into an action. So you're just one click away from that perfect image. And I'm gonna start right now. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is James and if it is the very first time to this channel and you want to learn all about Photoshop, Lightroom and everything photography related, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. So today guys I'm going to run through how you can enhance freckles, skin tones and facial features in Photoshop 2020. And then guys, I'm going to show you how you can turn it into an action. So you're just one click away from that perfect image. Now guys, if you want to use any of the photos that I'll be using in this tutorial, make sure you go and head down into the link in the description or take you to my website, photographybyfever.com, where you can download all of the photos. You can follow along step by step with the same photo that I'll be. Also guys, if you want to learn how you can download my free Photoshop action, wait until the end and I'll show you how you can download it. But without further ado, let's get started. Right guys, so the first thing you want to do is work out what photo that you would like to use to enhance freckles or just basically work on the skin tones. So if you want to use any of the photos that I'll be, make sure to go down to the link in the description and I've got three photos you can use. So we've uh, got photo one here, we've got photo two, and then we've got photo three. So these are just kind of generic photos that you can use, just portraits to, to just to work out kind of the techniques that I'll be uh, talking about today. But again, guys, if you would like to use any of the photos uh, that you've got, you can go ahead and, and, and do that. If you'd like to follow along, we have got those assets there for you. So first thing you want to do is go ahead and load Photoshop. So this is the uh, image or image one that I'm going to be uh, working with today. And what we're going to be wanting to do is we're going to be doing three things. So we're going to be enhancing the freckles. So we've got some freckles just around her nose there. Uh, we're going to be enhancing all the facial features uh, by uh, just kind of uh, sharpening them in specific areas. And then what we're also going to do is going to fix the skin tones and just warm up this image a little bit by bringing out some of the, the, the warmth and the contrast within the skin. So the very first thing you want to do is make sure we've got our background layer selected and we're going to want to duplicate the background layer. So if you want to press Command J on our keyboard, what it will do is it will copy a complete new layer. So as you can see, all, what you can also do guys is drag it down to the new layer icon in the bottom right hand corner. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a nice contrast and bring out the warmth in the image. So what we're going to do is we're just going to call this blur, uh, this uh, layer blur. And then what we're going to do is we want to add a little bit of blur to the image to create a nice contrast. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to filter, we're going to go to blur, and then we're going to go to Gaussian blur. Now we don't want to blur it too much uh, because it will start to distorting the image, but around five pixels for an image like this will be perfect. So if we're going to do that, again, depending on how high resolution it is, the more resolution or the, the larger quality of the image is, uh, the less blur you want. So, but for this image, around five pixels will be perfect. Now, as you can see, it's a bit blurry now. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the blending mode to soft light to create a nice contrast. So we're going to go to, uh, to our blending modes and we're going to go down to soft light. Now, as you can see, it's created a lovely contrast, but it's a bit too strong at the moment. So as we turn it on and off, as you can see, it's, it's lovely, but it's just made it a little bit too strong. And also, it's blurred it slightly. So what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to reduce this down to around 50%. And as you can see, it's created this nice contrast and brought out some of the warmth in the colours. But it's a bit too blurry at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to start enhancing all of the facial features. So we're going to go to our background layer again. Make sure we don't copy the blur layer. And we're going to press Command J again. We're going to duplicate the layer and add a new layer. And what we're going to do is drop this one above. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to start enhancing all of the, the kind of uh, uh, facial features that we've got here. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go down to Filter and then we're going to go to Other and what we're going to do is we're going to run a high pass filter on this. And this is what really starts to enhance all of the skin tones. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create a high pixel of whatever the amount of blur that you had. So if you chose five pixels for blur, we're going to want five pixels for high pass. 
So what we're going to do is press OK there. Brilliant. Now what we need to do is we need to change the blending mode again, but we're going to this time we're going to change it to overlay. So what we're going to do is going to go to our blending mode options and we're going to drop down this to overlay. Now as you can see, it's immediately really enhanced all of the skin tones and it's brought out all of the kind of, but if you if you don't want to add it to all of the areas, what we can do is you can create a uh, layer mask and then you can paint away any of the areas uh, that you don't that you don't want, which is perfect. It's a non-destructive way of creating a nice sharpened layer. Right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to start adding in some um, kind of warmth uh, and, and possibly just increase some of the saturation, but in a natural way. And the way we can do this is by creating a selective colour layer. So what we're going to do is going to drop, drop down to our uh, adjustment layers here and we're going to go to selective colour. Now what the selective colour will do is it will be able to adjust each of the colour bands depending on uh, with our CMYK sw uh, sliders. So, what we can do is we have a look in our colours and you can see it's broken into a bunch of colour bands. What we want to do is increase the amount of saturation per colour band using the sliders. So if we're choosing reds here, what we want to do is increase the amount of reds. And the way we can do that is by decreasing cyan, as cyan is the opposite of red. So what we'll do is we'll increase that by 100. So as you can see already it's increased some of the saturation, but we're going to have to do this for the rest of the colour bands. So what we're going to do is going to go to the yellows and as you can see it's got yellow marked here so what we could do is increase that and then we're going to go to our greens. Now what's the opposite of green? Magenta. So what we're going to do is decrease the amount of magenta increasing the amount of yellow, uh, green. We're going to go to our cyan so as you can see we've got a cyan slider so we're going to increase the amount of cyan and then we're going to go to our blue channel. Now what's the opposite of blue? Yellow. So we're going to decrease the amount of yellow. And then we're going to go to our magentas, and as you can see we've got a magenta slider, and we're just going to increase the amount of magentas. Brilliant! So there we go, we've increased all the amount, and as you can see if we turn this off and on again, it's brought out all of the kind of natural amount of uh, saturation in the image. It hasn't overly saturated it, but also it's enhanced it just enough to kind of make this image pop a little bit. So what we can do is, uh, if you're finding it's a bit too strong, what we can do is just reduce the opacity. Uh, I'm going to think I'm going to reduce it down to about 75%. Lovely. So the next thing we want to do is we want to enhance the freckles. Now the best way of enhancing the freckles is by making a black and white layer. Now if you follow me with this, so if we go down to our adjustment layers, and we're going to go and select our black and white layer, it's turned it to black and white, but that's no good because we want it to be in colour. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our blending modes, and we're going to go down to luminosity. And as you can see, it's turned it back into colour again. Now, when we want to enhance the freckles, we want to decrease the amount of yellow in the image. So if we go to our yellow palette here, and then we're just going to reduce the amount of yellows, as you can see, it's bringing out all of the uh, freckles. But as you can see, it's darkening the image. It's not looking very good at the moment. So what we're going to do is first thing, we're going to invert our layer mask by pressing Command I on our keyboard, and then you can see it's all gone. But now what we want to do is we want to paint the areas that we want the freckles to be enhanced. So we're going to go to our brush tool, we're going to make sure we've got a nice soft brush, so select a fairly big brush, nice and soft, and we want to go to our opacity at the top here and reduce it down to about 50%. And then basically where you want to add the freckles, we just want to dab just along the edge here, just along maybe a little bit on our forehead, on our cheeks, and a little bit further down, like so. And as you can see if we turn it on, and off again, it's really brought those freckles out and it's really kind of made the image pop just a little bit more, which is lovely. So what we're going to want to do now is I think maybe we want to add two more uh, filters and I think we're going to be happy. So I think we're going to add a gradient and then I think we're going to add maybe a warmth uh, kind of tone to this image. So what we're going to do is to make a, um, to make a vignette gradient layer. We want to go to our adjustment layers and we want to go and select gradient. Lovely. So what we're going to do is select completely black and then we're going to invert it to make this lovely vignette around the edge. So we're going to uh, turn this to black. So we're going to turn that area to black there. We're going to turn this area to black here. And then we're going to make sure at the top here, we've got our opacity of zero. So uh, we're going to do that. Lovely. So as you can see, it's a bit dark at the moment. Uh, so we will need to change the style and we're going to need to change the size. So we've got to change the style from linear to radial, as radial is round. And then what we want to do is we want to go to our scale, and then we want to increase it to 300%. So 
then we're going to want to reverse this so we want it dark around the outside and not dark in the middle and then what you want to do is move it around just to see where it's light and then you can kind of cast a spotlight on the subject in the middle but it darkens around outside so we do that turn it off and on as you can see it's just darkened the exterior of the photo and kind of really brought a main focus to the face right so the next thing we want to do is we just want to enhance just the color slightly just to make a bit more of a warm feel because i think that's what this image needs but again you can choose any color you like if you find it's a cooler image we can add that or for warmer image you can do you can do that as well so if we go down to our adjustment layers and we're going to go to solid color so now depending on uh, if you what type of uh, theme you'd like for this image i'm going to create a nice warm theme so you want to choose warm colors like red orange yellow but if you go for more of a cool theme you can maybe add some greens turquoise or even blue so if we're going to go and select our orange we're going to go for about here and then maybe a little bit more orange like that brilliant so now we're going to change the blending mode again to soft light so we're going to go to our blending mode options and we're going to go down to soft light but this is way too strong so what we need to do is just reduce the opacity down so to see where we're happy so reduce it all the way down to 100 percent and just increase it to the amount that you'd like so i think around i think around 10 percent will work perfectly brilliant so now we just need to work out see what the difference is so if we want to hold down first layer i go down to our blur layer and if we press command g as you can see we've put it into a group and then we can turn it on and off again and as you can see that has really enhanced this image which is lovely now guys if you uh, want to create an action all you'll have to do is just follow along to the process so just go back to the start of uh, uh, when we started this and then all you want to do is make sure you go to your action palette and you want to make sure that you've got a new action and you press uh, the record button and what it'll do is it'll record everything and then you'll finish it and then you'll be able to use it time and time again but if you'd like to download the pre-made assets uh, or actions that I've already made for this particular technique, then you can go ahead to my Google Drive or the link in the description and you'll be able to download that. So I'm going to show you how you can do that now. So if we uh, just delete that for the moment and then we're just going to delete the background. So we start from our blank slate again. Once you've downloaded it onto your computer, if you want to go to your actions palette, you can go up to Windows and select actions just at the top here. What we want to do is we want to, uh, to download it or load it onto Photoshop. So if we're going to go to our panel options, which is just at the top right hand corner, there's some uh, line icon. And then we want to go down to load actions. Brilliant. So wherever you've saved it, so I've saved it on my desktop and I've called it enhanced portraits. So what we do is we press, press open and you can see it comes up with a new folder. So if we look in that subfolder, we have got two actions here. So we've got action warm and action cool. So if we go to enhance act shape warm and then we just press play what it'll do is it'll go through everything we've just done but it will activate it in just one click which is so much easier when you come to editing and then as you can see i've got the enhanced portraits warm in the folder all we have to do is drop down and as you can see it's got all of the actions and things that we've done in photoshop so the only thing that you'll have to do once you finish this is you just make sure you want to invert the black and white layer and then you just want to again paint in all of where the uh, freckles are because otherwise it sometimes can affect skin tones if there are too many freckles within the image but uh, there we go guys so that is how you can use my actions and how you can use a high pass filter to create an amazing effect in photoshop 2020. brilliant and there we go guys so that's how you enhance skin tones freckles and facial features in Photoshop 2020. Now guys, I'm going to be creating a masterclass video that will go a lot further in depth into the step-by-step -step processes, how you can really enhance your photos and create an amazing portrait. So make sure you stay tuned and subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my latest content. Also guys, if you want to like, comment and subscribe, it really does help my channel grow. Also guys, if you want to check out the Teespring store, I've got the link in the description and I've got a bunch of t-shirts and hoodies and I update it every single week. But until next time guys, keep creating.